Hey guys, I'm the Hacksmith. On this episode of Make It Real, we're gonna be building a full metal Iron Man gauntlet. And it's gonna be complete with one of Iron Man's most iconic abilities. This video is sponsored by Display. Get 20% off artwork using my link below. Hey guys, it's the Hacksmith. The world is a little weird right now with all the lockdowns and this big pandemic going on. Most of our team is working from home, but Bogdan and I chose to self-isolate here together in the shop. So we can keep making projects to make videos for you guys to watch while you stay at home. All right, let's boot up. If you're new to the channel, we've done a ton of Iron Man projects in the past, from shooting rockets with Jarrah Saval, to trying to fly with model rocket engines, to even making a full metal Iron Man helmet giving it to Richard Browning of Gravity Industries and trying out his real-life jet suit. We've even made Edith glasses, too. I think the next step is making a full metal Iron Man suit. Don't you? But a full suit would be pretty complicated, so we should start with something simple, like this arm here. And since we've leveled up our stainless steel fabrication skills ever since building that half-scale Cybertruck, we're going to be making this completely out of stainless steel. It's going to be all shiny, just like Tony Stark's Mark II suit. Let's get started with the design. All right, so the hardest part about building an Iron Man suit is probably actually designing it. If you look at, say, this prop that we have right here, you can tell it's all curved features and complex little things, really time consuming to design. But a while ago, I got thinking, have you guys ever heard of Papakura? Basically, cosplayers around the world make these amazing Iron Man suits out of cardboard, foam and paper, and there are actually designs out there. I actually went and I bought some of these designs. They're actually pretty intricate. They're designed to be cut out of cardboard or foam and then folded together into the shape. Well, we have a plasma cutter, which means we could potentially just take these designs and cut them out of steel, then form the steel to be able to make an actual full metal Iron Man suit. There's one catch though. They weren't designed to be cut out of steel. These have tabs, which you use to actually glue the model together. We can't really do that with steel. So we are still going to have to modify these designs just a little bit before we can actually design our Iron Man suit to be made out of metal. But this is a fantastic base resource to build our model off of. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to buy the wheel and modify it. Know what I mean? As James mentioned, we've got the paper cura files, but now we'll need to modify them in SOLIDWORKS to optimize them for fabrication. We actually have multiple marks of Iron Man suits, and we're going to pull bits and pieces from each suit in order to optimize our fabrication. For example, this Mark 46 glove has large palm pieces, but the fingers are tiny little squares. We don't want to be cutting that much and trying to figure out which one goes where, so instead we'll use the Mark 45 fingers, which have nice large rectangles. Here's the DXF in SOLIDWORKS. Let's start updating the design. Throughout the design process, I've actually fabricated a couple of prototypes to make sure that I can bend them just like they do in the model. Next up, we can do the fingers. The fingers turned out to be quite tricky because of the tight bend, so I had to make quite a few prototypes. But once I figured out that I can use stainless steel pipe in addition to the plasma cut pieces, I think it turned out pretty good. Next, we can do the forearm. Now, the arm looks a little weird in the model, but that's because I haven't modeled every single curve. The other tricky thing with doing the forearm was the scale. Luckily, we've got these prop models, which I was actually able to use in order to make sure that all the pieces fit together and fit on my arm. I'm happy with the design, and the prototypes look pretty good, which means the last step is to export these, get them plasma cut, and me and James can build the final gauntlet. This video is sponsored by Display. Have you ever wondered where I got that awesome artwork in my old office? Or in my new office? or in the shop? It's from Display. Display prints amazing artwork on metal, which you can hang with the included magnets, which is perfect if you have OCD like me, because it's super easy to adjust. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. Plus, they plant a tree with every piece of artwork sold. If you ever get bored, you can always switch your display since they use magnets. Use my link below to get 20% off your order. Every purchase used through my link helps our channel continue to make these awesome projects. 
I've got the DXF loaded into the Maverick CNC software. Now we just gotta get the sheet metal onto the bed and we'll be ready to cut. We're actually using 16 gauge stainless steel as it should be very strong while allowing us to still bend it. Done, let's go fishing. I think that's all of them. Let's see. Okay, this one goes here. This is the worst puzzle ever. Finally, that's all of them. All right, we finished deburring all 37 pieces. There's a, a lot of fabrication ahead, but basically we're gonna break it down into three different parts. We've got the fingers right here, which I gotta say, really don't look like fingers. There. <laughs> It's a lot of bending and welding to be done to make those look like fingers. Then we have the palm, and then we have this entire gauntlet. So I'll start working on the fingers. You can start working on the palm, and then maybe we'll work on the gauntlet together after we finish that. But let's get started. All right, let's form these fingers. So step one is to mark our bend lines. Now that our lines are marked, we can start bending it on the brake. All right, so the next step, to get the curve of the bottom part of the finger, we're actually going to make use of some stainless steel pipe. So now that we've got our bent finger, put the piece of pipe on the edge. We'll tack this in place with a few welds. We'll cut a groove there and actually bend it down along the fingertip. So we've got them tack welded in place now, which means I can start forming the front tip of the finger. So the beauty with metalwork, unlike woodworking, is if you take off too much material, you can always weld more material back on. So it might look a bit rough right now, but we will be able to make this into a pretty nice looking finger. I hope anyways. It's not pretty, but a grinder and paint. We still need to weld a bit more on the seam and then chop it up into the individual joints of the finger. But before I do that, I have another four fingers to make. The palm actually consists of multiple layers. So the first step is to weld the layers together and then we can start bending them into shape. In order to join the front of the hand and the back of the hand, we're gonna start off by bending it on the brake and then get it into position with a pair of pliers. So you can see there's actually a little bit of curve in the palm and that geometry there is critical in order to allow the two pieces to fit together properly. Last few steps are just a couple of welds around the edges and we should have a fully completed palm. Now that the glove is all welded and ground, looks pretty good, but it's a little hard to get my hand inside. So just like the plastic replica, we're gonna cut the top open and add a hinge so that it's easier to get our hand in. Now, 
All I need to do is add a hinge. All right, that took forever, but finally we have all five fingers done and they're all cut into individual pieces. Now the question is, how do we attach these to the glove? You see, most Iron Man costumes just use a red fabric glove on the inside to make it look like it's the full Iron Man suit. And that actually brings up a really good question about a real life Iron Man suit. How would you actually have a fully armored hand that actually has a mobility and can protect you? You see, this is just fabric here, which makes your hand pretty vulnerable. Which gave me the idea, what if we actually took a chainmail glove, then the Iron Man gauntlet would actually be completely armored. You know, just in case some samurai attacks you randomly. Ah! Oh, jeez. Not bad. But the next question, how do we attach metal to thin chain mail? You might be wondering what I'm doing. Well, I'm actually stuffing Kevlar rope into the chain mail. And the nice thing about Kevlar is it doesn't burn, which means it won't catch on fire while I'm welding. You might be wondering how it's possible to weld something as thin as chainmail. Well, you see, I'm not actually welding. What I'm doing is brazing using silicon bronze. Silicon bronze actually requires a lot lower temperature to melt, which means it can fuse with the base material without actually melting it, which means I can weld any thickness to any other thickness or any material to any other material. It's pretty awesome. If you want to learn more about it, check out a video by this old Tony. Just got to grind that off and it'll be a pretty little finger. All right, fingers are done. Just got to cool them off. To do some of the more curvy parts of the Iron Man gauntlet, we're actually using stainless steel pipe because it's really hard to uh, curve a piece of metal like that. So instead, we just cut a piece out of the pipe and now we can weld this together to make the gauntlet. All right, got all the pieces. Now we just have to finish up the welding. All right, it's been almost a month of work, but we finished our full metal Iron Man gauntlet, the first step to building a full metal Iron Man suit. But right now, it's just armor. It's no better than a medieval suit of chain mail. What makes an Iron Man suit an Iron Man suit is the technology that goes into it. So on the next episode of Make It Real, make sure you subscribe, we're gonna be adding Iron Man's cutter to this. But instead of using a giant laser, which isn't really practical, we're gonna be miniaturizing our CNC plasma cutter into this gauntlet, which means I'll be able to cut through steel plate just like butter.